What's up guys, welcome back to the offseason. The last video was the season recap of all the stats and stuff, but now we're going to get into the main part, which is the preparations for next year. And before we do that, I just wanted to check out the two players that left us last year in the uh, our first offseason and see how they're doing on their new team. So one of the players that we lost was a middle linebacker, Russell. He was a... Uh, I redshirted him in the fresh in uh, year number one, and I guess he didn't like that. He wanted playing time. Keith Hale came in and pretty much took his spot. So he wasn't going to get a lot of playing time on our team, but he did decide to transfer to Florida International. And it looked like it was a pretty good decision for him because if we look at the little linebackers, uh, the two guys above him are both seniors. So he should be starting next year as a junior as opposed to not really getting any playing time on our team the second guy we brought in is Reskigno the quarterback probably pronounced that wrong so badly uh he is probably not going to be getting a lot of playing time with Eric Henderson our uh, four-star quarterback that we brought in and looking at the quarterbacks he's going to have to compete at NIU to get a spot but he has a chance he does have a chance so we'll have to see what he does in the future so now we're moving on to the coaching carousel, and we got a lot of offers for offensive coordinators. I don't really know why I would leave to do that, but we did get one shot at head coach. Our first shot at head coach is at Idaho, but I decide not to take it. They just have an awful record. They're coming off a, a pretty bad season. I was hoping to get a different head coach offer. You know, I'm just seeing what we get. I might change, I might not. I still have not completely decided, but I think after the end of three, uh, Season 3, I will probably know a little bit better. But now we can look at the coaching changes for our uh, Big Ten. Uh, Indiana got a new head coach. And obviously there's a lot of coordinator changes. Purdue got a brand new head coach. Uh, we did not really change anyone. We got a new defensive coordinator, Todd Orlando. Looks like he has a C prestige. I don't know why we would fire our defensive coordinator after having a uh, great defensive season. Kyle Flood got a four-year extension, so it doesn't look like we're going to be the head coach anytime soon. Probably going to lead to a change. I don't know. But now I'm just going to quickly show all of the head coaching changes. going to go through it pretty fast. If you want to pause for your team, you can. It's going to go by pretty fast, but can't really go into it that much in depth I wish you would cut out the ones that just have extensions because that would make this list a lot easier but that's pretty much a look around the league so now to players leaving and I thought Reddick was going to leave after having a pretty good season and it's actually going to be Laviano he was tired of sitting on the bench and now he uh, he has a chance to make it in the NFL and that's what he's going to do we also have Steve Longa I promised him a third round selection last year and he actually did better he's projected to go into the second round then we had our strong safety, uh, Jackson. Uh, we have a pretty crowded defensive back uh, field, so he's deciding to transfer to Nevada. I think we actually had the chance to bring him back, but I don't know. Or no, Laviano had a very high chance of coming back. But we have Henderson, who we just redshirted. He's coming off his redshirt now. Uh, he will be a pretty fine backup, and... I don't want to keep Laviano on the team just, you know, to hold someone else's roster spot when he's really not going to get any playing time. Kenneth Jackson, uh, he was not easy to come back. He was actually at a very low chance of coming back, and he's not that highly rated. I could not promise him very much of anything. I don't even think I bothered, but... And uh, everyone else uh, graduated. So the draft predictions were pretty uh, accurate. Steve Longo went in the second... Laviano went into the fifth. I think we now have a total of three uh, drafted players, so that's good. And uh, no one decided to transfer here. Now taking a look at the recruiting, we got a pretty good recruiting class here, led by five-star recruit Mike Woods, our halfback that we're going to have to see what he can do in a few years. We got Aaron Newell, a defensive tackle, 77 overall. Dustin Neal, a receiver, 77 overall. And then a few uh, 70 overall athletes. And then we have just some 60 overall guys. We're going to have to wait a while to see them. But then coming down here, we also have some other guys. Marcus Macklin, 
after we graduated three different receivers we're gonna have to see what they can do and michael mathis is 75 overall cornerback and with that class we actually got 17th overall out of all the teams and i think last year we had like 30th so we are moving up in terms of that all right now going into recruiting we start off with uh, shannon stewart our one of our freshmen that we just picked up we're gonna move him to the right just to balance off the offensive line bruce jackson He's a junior, and we're going to move him to the left. Uh, he might get some playing time next year. Nick Lawson was an 80 overall halfback, and I know we got Mike Woods, but I just could not resist getting an 80, 80 overall recruit, so I had to move him. That's going to be interesting. Cody Mason we end up putting at safety, and Dan Allen we end up putting at receiver to help out over there. So now we have player progression and topping off the list is Hayden Reddick, 97 overall for his senior year and Eric Henderson at 81 as a freshman. I'm very excited what he can do. Robert Martin is and, and Josh Hicks are both 93 overall and we just look at the fullbacks. Receivers, only four receivers returning. I could see up to 91 and Brandon Lilly. Um, he will be our number two looks like we only have 66 catching i'm definitely worried about that and we might have to look into red shirting him actually matt flanagan up to 83 overall i definitely want to look for a tight end in the recruiting class a good one our offensive line is going to be a little bit weak but pretty balanced across the board so not not too bad dorian miller our only returning uh starter miles nash up to an 82 overall jamie hogan to an 84 we have Sebastian Joseph will be at defensive tackle at 87. Margolis will be at outside linebacker 76. Keith Hale up to an 81. I'm very excited what he can do after winning the All-American. Look at some of our corners and just some safeties. Everyone, of course, getting a nice bump. Had to look at Andy Larson's leg because he was not that great this year. But And Andy Larson gets a nice bump up to 80 kick power. So hopefully he can make some longer field goals and get some points on some of our drives. Thomas Williams is now up to 95 kick power. So he's just going to be booming punts all year. Let me look at some of our top uh, players by positions. And surprisingly, a few of these guys are not even seniors, which is good. But we still need to get some of these, uh, build some depth to get some of these higher skilled players. Our fastest guy will be Terrell Harmon. Our strongest will be Brandon Vogel. Now we have the chance to cut players, but we're actually at 70, so no need to really cut anyone. It was a good thing I didn't bring Laviano back because I probably would have had to cut one of these guys, but even though these guys are uh, walk-ons, very low overall rating, I'm just going to keep them on the team anyway because, you know, why not? So now we're going to look at red-shirting players. Uh, Nick Woods, our quarterback, I don't see him getting any meaningful playing time on our team. So I'm not going to redshirt him. He's just more of a temporary replacement at that. At halfback, we have three guys. Uh, Nick Lawson, Mike Woods, and uh, Jansen will all get redshirted. Uh, one of them, you know, most definitely will uh, transfer away. But, you know, we're still going to get uh, one of Lawson or Woods is definitely going to be a good on our team. Whoever sticks around. We'll have to see. That's going to be interesting. But yeah, all three will get the red shirt. At fullback, we're not going to red shirt any of these guys. Just let them uh, stay how they are. Andrew Sims will play his final season and not pretty much get any playing time. Uh, coming over to receiver, I basically only uh, based this off of catching ratings. Because I, it means a lot to be able to catch, especially with all the dropped passes we had with uh, Arch Diacono last year. Uh, Cleveland, I just did because he was the lowest rated, but his catch was all right. Or 64, actually, no. I wanted to do that. But Brandon Lilly, I didn't redshirt him the first year. I'm going to redshirt him this year just because his catch is so low. I don't think he's ready to be a top three receiver on our team. So it will be Algodosi, Neal, and Harmon will be our starting three with Macklin, Allen, and Edwards as our backup guys for this season and here i was just debating or actually i did take matt or give it to macklin so we only have five receivers going in 
Just because, yeah, I, Marcus Macklin is also not ready to play because it only has a 64 catch. Uh, tight end, Rollins gets uh, redshirted. Don't really ever need three tight ends. Our offensive line, I think all of our guys that we brought in, or two of them that we did, Copeland and Stewart will both get the red shirt. They are not going to be playing at all. Um, Bruce Jackson we could, but he's probably going to play next year somewhere. Uh, I'm kind of worried he might not get any playing time, but we'll see. We'll see. Not right. Aaron Newell. If he was a little bit higher rated, I might have kept him, but I think sitting him for a year will keep it um, or up his ratings a lot. Eric Ward, not ready to play at all. A bunch of guys we could redshirt at corner. But Mathis and Bush, both of our freshmen, we're going to redshirt. Again, if Mathis was like two overall points higher, he'd be uh, our second uh, corner probably. But because of he didn't have those two points, he's going to sit out his first year. I'm not too worried about players leaving because I think we have a pretty good set of backups as of right now to always plan ahead. So our three guys we will not be redshirting is Nick Woods, Allen, and Neal. Only three offensive guys. It looks some of our uh, underclassmen here. Keith Hale, Harmon, and Oliver have all contributed last year and are going to contribute this year. Not Don't need the red shirt and juniors and seniors. That was before our time anyway. So one last look at our depth chart. It'll be Reddig, Henderson, Woods. No real uh, controversy there, I guess. At halfback, it'll be Martin, Hicks, Sinorway. Uh, yeah, Martin definitely played better. Uh, I could always change that if Hicks becomes better, although he was not proving himself last year or the year before, actually. Uh, Folkerts will be the fullback. Agudosi, of course, net number one. Dustin Neal, and then Harmon, Allen, Henderson. Or not Henderson, we actually need to sub him out here. Because we cannot have our quarterback, or backup quarterback, playing receiver. Although I think it's very funny how he can do that. Because I don't think he was a athlete. He was just a, a quarterback. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe he played quarterback at high school or something. But yeah, we're going to have Josh Hicks or someone. Someone's going to be playing sixth uh, wide receiver. And it'll be our tight end. Speaking of tight end, Matt Flanagan. Uh, our number one guy, and then Griffin, and then just I put Hicks there, I guess. Or yeah, maybe I put the fullback or something, yeah, because usually if there's three tight ends, you can usually put in the fullback. I don't know, it's not too important, you don't really see three tight ends that much. Uh, offensive line is pretty set, Richwalski, and then Cole, Jaquise Webb in the middle. Dorian Miller on the right, our only returning guy. Marcus Applefield. We have Miles Nash, who played uh, pretty uh, pretty good last year. Jimmy Hogan, I think, is new. Sebastian Joseph's new. Margolis is new. Keith Hale, play, uh, of course, our All-American middle linebacker. Deontay Roberts is certainly new. we have to see what he can do. Isaiah Wharton still at number one. Ronnie James, Oliver, Adams, and then Hester at that number five spot. So we've come a long way in this defensive backfield. So hopefully that'll be much more improved. Andy Larson and Thomas Williams obviously in the kicking unit. And then we have our returner is going to be Josh Hicks this year. I might put in Terrell Harmon. I don't know, but we'll have to see about that. And then Dorian Miller is a long snapper, I guess. And now our final thing to do is look at our schedule. So after the hot start that we had last year, going like 5-0 and and getting all the way up to number 9, I made the beginning of the schedule a little bit harder. We're going to open up at Temple, then travel to Houston, and then start our, our first division matchup, and then face number 12 Auburn at home. That's probably going to be the most exciting matchup of this year. Of besides, of course, number one Ohio State. Look at that. Four ranked matchups we're going to face this year. And that will certainly be interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this off season. And I hope you guys stick around for more episodes. I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.